Hi, welcome again to Intellect Medicals. I'm Dr. Chirag Madan, working as an intensivist at Apollo Hospital New Delhi. So today I'll discuss about mucormycosis, or the other term nowadays used as black fungus. In all the media, in all the newspapers, I mean, they're using this word black fungus. And uh, everywhere there is a scare of mucormycosis. So we need to know what it is, what to do, when to do, and uh, what is the actual treatment. Right? So this is a fungus, invasive fungus, and this is very aggressive, having a very aggressive phase. All because this has a vascular invasion. The hyphae goes into the vascular and get disseminated. So whenever there is a disseminated disease, disseminated mucormycosis, this is very devastating and the having a mortality of almost 100% if it is disseminated, right? Now the other thing is why it happens, in which individual does it happen? So all the individuals who are immunocompromised, let's say uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, then patients who have a organ transplant, solid organ transplant or hematopoietic stem cell, or patient who are on immunosuppressant drugs, right? So these are the patients who are at a, at a risk. I mean, not all individuals who are on steroids because of this COVID will get a mucormycosis. So if a patient is on steroid, I mean, all because we are working in a pandemic. So if a patient is on steroid and that to uncontrolled, uncontrolled blood sugar levels, they are the patients who are at a high risk of getting a mucormycosis. Because nowadays we are getting patients in our ICU with mucormycosis. But the history says the sugar control is not that good. The HbA1c will be on a higher side. It must be around 10 or 11. And uh, during the illness, the sugar levels are around 300 or 400 or more than that. So uh, why it happens is this organism, rhizopus organism, they have uh, this enzyme ketone reductase, which allows them to thrive in uh, high glucose and acidic media. So if a healthy a serum of healthy individual, they inhibit the growth of rhizobus. Whereas a patient uh, or an individual with high glucose and acidic media, mainly the DKA patient, they stimulate the growth of this fungus. So this is the reason they, they, these are the patients on a high sugar with acidic media. So these are the patients who are at a very high risk of getting this mucormycosis. Now, uh, how will we diagnose this patient? First of all, before that, what are the types? So, most common are rhino, orbital and cerebral. So, this is the one, the other is the pulmonary mucormycosis. Now, uh, what are the clinical features? How will you identify these patients? The patients having a black eshkar on the palate the, and that is the reason it is called as black fungus because you see eshkar because it, it invades into the vas vasculature and gets the thrombosis and the tissue is necrosed. So this is the reason there is a black uh, lining right over the nasal mucosa or the palate. So black lining over the palate, over the nasal mucosa, lid swelling, ptosis, proptosis. Uh, so these are the symptoms or the clinical feature which you, you can see. Now coming on to the diagnosis. The diagnosis is made by the histopathological uh, and the culture report. So if a culture says hyphae are broad, irregular branching and rear septations. So that is almost almost suggestive of mucormycosis. Whereas the other entity is aspergillus. So in the aspergillus, the hyphae are, they are narrow and they are having a good branching. Along with that, there are a good number of septations, which is absent in mucormycosis. So this is how we make a diagnosis on the culture report, histopathology and the culture report. Right? Now, coming on to the most important thing, the treatment. How do we treat these kind of patients? So first and foremost step is early diagnosis. So second is the surgical exploration, right? Either from the palate or the nasal mucosa or the orbital area. And then third comes the role of antifungals. Now, which antifungal to add? First and foremost, the drug of choice remains amphotericin B that to a liposomal, right? The dose of liposomal amphotericin B is 5 to 10 milligram per kg body weight, right? So you initiate with 5 and obviously depending on the clinical scenario and the renal parameters, you increase the dose of uh, amphotericin, liposomal amphotericin B. 
the other alternative or the salvage therapy if the patient is not re- responding to amphotericin B you go on to the other therapies which is posaconazole this posaconazole is available in oral form as a suspension and as IV as well right so uh, nowadays what we are doing is we are adding amphotericin B along with posaconazole and uh, uh, the dose of uh, posaconazole is 3 mg- 300 mg IV BD followed by 300 mg OD so it, it could be IV or uh, oral but the thing is if there is renal impairment you don't go for a IV you go for a oral formulation why because there is a product uh, which, which accumulates if there is renal impairment which is called as SVECD let's not go into that much detail but the thing is posaconazole is used in alternative or the other alternative is isavuconazole the dose of isavuconazole is uh, 200 mg twice a day for two days for six doses then followed by 200 OD so these are the therapies which we give for a uh, uh, for mucor mycosis but the most important remains the early diagnosis surgical explanation then antifungal right and you don't need to panic about mucor mycosis yes if the patient is immunocompromised I mean there is a patient having a AIDS or low CD3, uh, CD4 count or maybe uncontrolled diabetes and then you have a high suspicion then you go for a antifungal or a surgical exploration. Otherwise, there is no need to panic, there is no need to add empirical uh, or prophylactic uh, antifungals to a patient. Right? So, uh, take care guys. It's a very critical time going on. I mean, receiving these kind of patients, first of all, the COVID and nowadays mucormycosis. So, don't panic and don't uh, spread uh, fake messages. I mean, I am getting so many messages that it is now essential to add antifungal. No, it's not. So take care and uh, best of luck for the future. Bye-bye. Take care.